Can you prioritize geographically where this project is going to operate? How did you respond? Yes, that is a good point. And actually, one of the ways which we, we said we were asked for more focus and we tried to give more focus, one was by, in geographical terms, was by linking up with the other CRP, the other, and especially CRP 3.7 and more, uh, more meat, milk and fish. So by working in those value chains, we think we can have a win-win, be part of their value chain transformation. So and you will be linked into those, the pig system, the, the uh, et cetera, et cetera. Is that That's correct? the plan. And at the same time, okay. they give us an impact pathway. Okay. Now that, well, that is, that is very good, a good idea and very sensible, but it means that you are really focusing. And so there are going to be all sorts of geographical areas and systems areas that you won't be looking at. Correct. Okay, let's talk about the next point on three, is the quality of the science. Uh, they had, what about a research question on gender? How did you respond to that? So yes, gender is, is cross-cutting, not only in terms of uh, you know, risk assessment and dis gender disaggregated disease burden, but also in risk managers. And the fact that women have a key role, especially in the management of foodborne diseases, but also other zoonotic diseases. On the point they raised about the quality of the research and development partners, uh, they, they wanted to in ensure that instead of this being uh, a CG center uh, activity, that you would there was a devolution of decision making to development partners. So they weren't just operating under contracts that they were actually involved. How did you respond to that? Well, I think that's an area which is still challenging for us. And it's, as a livestock institute, we don't have a mandate to go out and vaccinate children. So many of these, these health interventions, we are only going to be part of a complicated jigsaw, which involves many different partners, unlike other activities which, which we can lead. In this one, we have to serve and follow. We have those concepts, but how it will actually play out with partners, I think, has to wait until the work starts on the ground. Lastly, accountability and governance. governance. Uh, how will the research projects be evaluated and monitored? I mean, ultimately, we, we, our indicator is human health. So our, our, into, our indicator is disability adjusted life years, sickness and death avoided and averted. But the actual way that will turn into a monitoring and evaluation uh, framework is, is yet is under development. Okay, fair enough. Well, thank you very much. Bernard, I'm going to ask you a little bit. Bernard looks after the emerging diseases. Now, in the food safety side, uh, they clearly differentiate between hazards, in other words, all those bugs that Vish mentioned, and the risks of being, a, being linked to these, uh, the, of, of getting those. In other words, bugs are everywhere, but the, the, whether you go down with anything depends on the, on the risk. How do you beef up the risk side on these emerging diseases? Because who knows when they're going to happen? The, the, the main challenge with the emerging diseases is how do you start study, studying them? How do you even build surveillance because they are not there in the first place? You have to wait for them to occur. <laughs> but, but the main thing which we want to do is uh, to develop a systems approach where we, instead of just looking at the dis disciplines, like what we have been doing in the past is we have various disciplines like biotech, epidemiology doing their own things. We want to come up with a framework which helps to identify drivers for those diseases, okay. and so we, we build our efforts to, 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 to build more surveillance based on the drivers rather than the, the, the risks. Okay, well, two other questions on that. Aren't there enough groups out there doing things on worrying about emergency diseases? You've got FAO, uh, you've got OIE. I mean, they spend all their life worrying about those sort of things. Where, where does Ilri have a comparative advantage? I think Ilri, by... Yes, what uh, Lucy was saying is putting in this knowledge um, um, dimension where we, we, we want to work with the partners using this um, inclusive framework and see where can we come in. Because there are many people doing everything, USDA, I mean, as you say, OIE. But I think for our, for our case, we have to go for where is the new knowledge coming, coming up from, I mean, knowledge on emerging infectious diseases. And how can we can we involve uh, partners in their control rather than us doing everything? So we just have to prioritize areas which we can work as in with and where our partners can. Okay. Well, following up on a question I asked to Carlos, I just mentioned FAO and OIE. Are they written into this? Are you going to be working with them? 
True, yeah, we are working with that because even in the new uh, framework which we are developing, um, everybody is there, even USDA is involved, um, local institutions in, in various countries are involved, so partners are there. Uh, Fish, um, uh, the, the, the biotechnology side of Ilri, I mean, I understand that some 30% of your budget is now coming out of, the, will be coming out of, uh, uh, of, this, uh, of this project, I don't know if that's correct. Now you've got uh, Roger Pelé, uh, Steve Kemp, Phil Toy, Jan Nasons or his, and his successor, uh, who are all going to be potentially. But what the heck do they know about uh, about zoonotic disease, and what the heck do they know about foodborne disease? So, so Brian, one of the things that I found really intriguing in some of the discussions that take place now is this concept of evidence-based stuff. What the hell were we doing before having evidence? So one of the things that all these guys will be doing is basically generating that evidence so that you can actually put some data into there and then talk about these things with greater confidence. So they don't need to know anything about that. So it, it's, it's essentially adding a lot more diagnostic technologies to the components uh, and I think that that's a huge opportunity. And how have you thought about, I'm sure you have, what range of additional diagnostic technologies, how will it differ from the sorts of things that you've, that you've got now, the capacities you've got now? So one of the things is that most of the current technologies are lab-based technologies. Um, there's always been a question of whether we need to have more field-based diagnostics. That's one of the things that's certainly being tested. Um, you may be aware that Phil and his group have been looking at um, a, a rapid diagnostic test for porcine cystocytosis that's just been, for those who are interested, actually it's been developed by a private company in Kampala. And it's turned out to be extremely successful. It, it works just as well. And so that could be one of the applications, for example, going forward, et cetera, still remains to be determined. But you could envisage that there would be other needs for other types of rapid diagnostic tests as well. There's always going to be a lab component because I think the molecular epidemiology component is always going to be an important one. It's difficult to see some of those activities going out into the field, but there are certainly the rapid tests that one could envisage going. How will your role in Becker be different? Can you tell us what will be your role? Very much. I think the, the opportunities at Becker are extremely exciting. Trying uh, to link technology would be in the field of genomics and metagenomics. Uh, Vish mentioned the diagnostic. I think we have the ability for uh, diagnostic development because I think we are talking about emerging infectious diseases. Some of the uh, uh, infectious diseases are already known and they come back probably very virulent or they come back to be in environments where we did not expect them to be. In the context of being more virulent, we, we, we have now the ability to look in the genome to see exactly what is the genetic determinant. And I think the Becker platform, the technologies that we have, is really not going to be different in terms of thinking uh, with the biotech group. Okay, but, but, but thinking that you are uh, relatively uh, young in, the, in, in, in Becker, and thinking that is an emerging disease, you're going to have CDC, uh, and you're going to have all sorts of people screaming around these uh, anything emerging. What particular comparative advantage will you, your platform have compared to them? So the platform that we have has the advantage of getting into the, genome, uh, into the DNA sequence immediately, which helps you to identify what is that bug. It's a bug that we already know. What is it? How is it different from the one that was already... Uh, but you can't determined. tell me that CDC in Nairobi won't have something uh, on a plane uh, to, uh, to Atlanta within, within two days or one day? So there are restrictions. You cannot just take a sample out of uh, an outbreak and take it to a different place. We have the advantage before you get the authorization to take the samples from Nairobi and get to the plane to Atlanta. In Nairobi, we should be able to run some genomics experiments and tell you uh, what we think could be approximate. I have always been of this opinion that prevention is worth a pound a cure. So I would like to see us working more on the prevention side. But then someone said, how could you do surveillance for a disease that hasn't yet emerged? Um, so the evidence has shown that when there is an outbreak, 
the, the longer it takes to respond to it, the more expensive it is to, to, to control it. So we would like to work at the prevention side and detect things as early as possible. And so I would like to hear more about surveillance and how we can do surveillance and so on for, for these kinds of things. But we also know that this is a rapidly changing and emerging field, this whole area, and it's a very unthought out field, it's a very new field, this, this intersection between human health, livestock, the environment. And so we'd like to keep a sort of a watching brief over other issues so that if they do emerge into more importance then we can be very flexible and very ready to also see what we can cont contribute to those. What surprises me though is the One Health that you sort of tucked away at the bottom of that box. One Health slash Eco Health is our framework, it's our conceptual framework for the entire program but that may not have come out very well and I will just add in passing that one of our partners, key partners who will be nameless called One Health a veterinary fad, so it's, it's probably not yet as popular as, as we hope it will be and would like to see it.